Hello and welcome to a new video here on Code Tech Tutorials. My name is Matt. I'm going to show you some stuff about pointers and memory management with C++. And hopefully uh, this helps you understand some of this stuff because it can be a bit confusing. So in C++ you have pointers and there there's a whole scope of things you could do with them that is sometimes way more efficient than passing around actual objects and working with actual objects what a pointer is is just a small bit of memory that says here is the start of this object in memory so it's just a little tiny piece of information rather than the entire object so let's walk through this first example to get started and then we'll get into some more advanced topics so I assume you already have some general basic knowledge about how to declare a pointer and that sort of stuff but uh, I'll, I'll kind of walk through it anyway so here we have just a main that will run from top to bottom when we hit the play button. And all this is here is a pointer to a float called stuff. Now by itself, if you don't initialize it, this is just a pointer to a chunk of memory, but we don't know what's in the memory until we run this new operation on it and say it equals a new float. This now assigns it and gives it its default value with its default constructor. So the default constructor for a float should be zero. So once we do this whole new float thing, we will get uh, that stuff equals zero. So we should see that. And to uh, console out this, so if you do just a standard console out without a star in front of it, what you will get is the pointer. So you'll see a memory address. So this right here would show the memory address of stuff. But if we put a star in front of it, we will dereference it and look at the data that it's pointing at. So this one here should actually show the value of zero. And then here we assign whatever it is pointing at because we're dereferencing it uh, to say, hey, the data now equals 10. If we didn't put this here, we would be saying the pointer equals 10F, which makes no sense and it would cause problems. Hopefully your static analysis would find that, but it would definitely, definitely cause some issues. So now, we should see with this C out that the value is now 10. Then what happens if we just delete this float? So you call delete on a pointer, it deletes all the data, leaves the pointer just essentially dangling and doing nothing. So you usually want to assign it to null pointer, but in general, that's how you get rid of it. And now to completely get rid of this, you would have to just let it go out of scope. So before your pointer goes out of scope, typically, unless something else starts managing the memory, you want to delete the data. I know that sounds confusing, but basically if we're doing a thing like, like this and like this, so it's in a new scope, once we get to this section of our program, just ignore all this for a second, uh, I'll comment it out. So once we get to this section of the program, our pointer would go out of scope, but this data that it created with this new would still just be sitting there in memory and nothing would be pointing to it. We'd have no way to access it, even though it would be sitting there in memory. And that's how you get memory leaks. So that's the whole point of the whole delete thing. So before you uh, leave this, if you don't need that data anymore, you would go just like that. And then, shabam, you're no longer just sitting with memory uh, allocated with nothing pointing to it, no way to access it. And that's uh, essentially how you fix a lot of memory leaks is you just manage this new and delete. Okay, so we delete stuff. That's going to delete all the data that it was previously pointing at. And we can say, hey, now it's no pointer. So all this does is it just zeros out the memory that it's pointing to, just makes it all zeros. And then we're going to play around with another idea here. We're going to declare a standard object that is a float. And we're just calling this one thing, give it the value 500. And now we can say that. Uh, this is the pointer, the stuff one, equals a reference to thing. So what will happen here is pretty interesting as well. This uh, reference here basically says, get me the pointer to this memory. Give me a reference to the memory. It's essentially the same thing as a pointer. So we can assign this pointer to whatever, wherever this object starts, basically. And we can, we can set its value that way. But it's not actually setting the value. It's just setting where it's pointing to. So if this thing it goes out of scope for example stuff will stop working as well so for example I'll, let's just let's just run this and I'll walk through all these C outs real quick and then I'll show you an example of how to like bug it out our first C out is just the address which we see there our second C out is the value 
which we see there of 0, and then we assign it to 10, and we get 10, um, and then we do some deleting, we assign it to thing, we see out it there, and we get 500, which is expected because it's point of thing, and then we just see out the reference to thing, which we see its address right there, ends in F8, and we also want to look at the pointer right after that, and we see it has the exact same address. The they're starting at the same place. And then if we do a reference to a pointer, it's essentially a pointer to a pointer is where the pointer starts. We're going to determine that it's four bits wide. Now, another interesting thing real quick, I'll show you if you switch it to 64, you'll get wider pointers. So 64 bit programs typically use up a little more memory. So if you don't need it to be 64, it's often a good reason not to is because you save a little bit of space taking a minute to recompile. What do you do in program? Oh, I'm in select mode. Yeah, that'll do it. So you see that the jump in the pointer is from 0 to 8 rather than from 4 to 8. Now it's just a way you can kind of tell there are other ways to check the width, but that's just something you can see from this example. Okay, now let's do a little thing where we let this go out of scope after assigning. So we'll do something like this. I'm going to get rid of this one here because we know it's not scope. So this starts a new scope, declares this thing, it was 500. Stuff now references that, and then we go out of scope. So what happens when this scope ends is this all, this uh, float thing equals 500, this all gets deleted. So this reference to it, the data is not going to be the same. It's been deallocated, it's been deleted. So this is going to be a bad reference now, and you got to watch out for this sort of thing in code because the memory is being managed by the original one. And you see we get some strange errors. We get this weird number. It's basically whatever was left in memory. That's what it decides it was, and it is no longer 500. It is, it is that. We could still look at the memory, memory addresses, which might be helpful for debugging in some cases. But in general, if what you assign to goes out of scope and deletes, you got to make sure your pointer stays up to date as well. So one of the things we can do to help catch this is if we know that this reference is no longer going to be valid, we can say stuff equals, well, we don't want to do it necessarily in this scope, but I guess we could. We just want to set it to null pointer. And that way, when we try to do a C out on the value, we should get an error. And it's better to get an error than for your buggy code to keep running, because at least you know you can fix it before you go deliver it. So here we see we get an exception thrown and it's an access reading violation. We see it's all zeros. That's because we set the memory to null pointer. And that's better than getting bad data because our analyzer stuff is going to catch it at least. Now let's talk a little bit about the errors that can be thrown when you're working with this new operator. This is a really deep subject. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get into all of it. Sure, I'm gonna end up leaving a lot out, but I'm gonna try to at least cover all the basics that you need to know. So one of the things that can happen is it can throw a bad allocation if you're out of memory and and can't allocate memory to this variable and it throws a bad alloc. So you can wrap this in a try catch block and see if you can catch a bad alloc, bad allocation. And if you do, you can give a little message or whatever you want to do, whatever you need to do. You can also um, print out this e dot what to see exactly what the problem was. So this is pretty much never going to fail. It's always going to have memory for a float, but we can introduce a case where it should fail just to test it out. Okay, so here is a case that would eventually crash our program due to extreme memory leaks uh, that I will show you, and eventually it'll throw a bad allocation. Now this is a very simple chunk of code. We still got the same floater, floater pointer to the float named stuff, and in this try block, we're just going to keep assigning it new floats indefinitely. But eventually, eventually this will throw a bad allocation or it should, and in that case we'll catch it and get this C out and it'll tell us what it is. Now we'll just watch what happens when I run this. This is this is a prime example of a memory leak. Now look at the memory over here. It's up to one gig already and it's going higher and higher. Two gigs, three gigs, it's just keep going up, nothing's going on in the console. Four gigs. I don't know if this is going to mess up the recording. It's possible that it might, but we're not deleting the, and freeing the old memory. We're just leaving the whatever was previously signed in memory and just declaring new ones. So there's just a whole bunch of our memory is just getting filled up with new floats of the zero value. This computer has uh, 32 gigs of memory, so this is going to take a really long time. But once this hits, you know, somewhere close to that maximum range where it's just there's no more memory left to allocate then it's going to throw this bad allocation. 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth waiting that long. Ah, we're already this far, let's keep waiting. Also, this incremental steady rising is often a clear sign that you have a memory leak. The longer your program runs, the more memory starts using. Usually a clear sign. So, we will be going over some ways to combat this critical problem. Okay, we're getting close to 32 gigs of memory. We should be crashing soon. Oh, it's probably just caching it onto my hard drive. Ah, oh, probably is just caching it onto my hard drive. All right, well, before this actually glitches out my computer, I'm just gonna stop it. But you're just gonna have to trust that eventually it would error and throw this bad allocation in this E dot what would just be standard bad alloc is what it would say, it would say this. Put it in comments there. Yeah, I just can't let it run that long. I, I'm fearing that it's going to mess up my recording more than anything, and I'll have to redo all of this. So, all right, let's go over some ways to help detect this sort of thing and combat these problems other than just catching. Well, I guess you always want to be checking for the bad allocation in a real program in general, but uh, let's, let's look at some other stuff. One of the things you see a lot of programmers do is redefine new or overload it so that it gets call it calls your own function and a lot of times you'll see people wrap it in an if define debug so this only builds with your debug and there's the end if so if I switch this to release it just uses the standard new if I switch it to debug it will now define all this code and we'll see some data about what's happening with our new Let's go ahead and hit this. And we see we had a new call at main.cpp line 18. And if we take a look at our code, line 18 here, yes, so I've simplified the main to now just call a function so it goes into a new scope. And there's line 18. So we could also define this for delete. And we've implemented a logger for the delete. Now delete's a little different, you can't do it exactly the same as new of course, so I just had it call this function before it does the actual delete, and that way we can log a line in a file. So this is how loggers and memory management tools are started. They usually just like save everything to a class, make sure it gets deleted, all that, and this is a very simplistic way of just visually getting a look from your console, but you can imagine how this could be expanded be like a full memory manager if you just kept going. Of course, we haven't even messed with the array versions, but of course, uh, you would have to overload all those as well. Okay, well, I know this has been a lot about pointers and how to manage them with new and delete. So where do we go from here? I think we've covered enough in this episode. Stay tuned for next episode where we will be talking about shared pointers and unique pointers. Consider becoming a Patreon yourself if you like this kind of stuff and would like to support it for further or just like the video or share it or whatever it may be. Stay tuned for more coding and tutorial stuff. Math for Code Tech Tutorials over and out. Peace. <laughs>